Hi everyone and welcome to What to Click, Tech Tips for Authors. I'm so excited. I'm here today with Evan. So Evan- Howdy, thanks for know, having me on. Yeah, for sure. If, Evan, if you didn't know, was actually on this channel, I think like five years ago, right? I think you're like- Yeah, it was about oh, <laughs> five years ago. Yeah. So, and it was when I was still using InstaFreebie, which is now Prolific Works, which has kind of like died on the wayside. And um, I'm surprised they're even still in business. Um, but since then, you've made like leaps and bounds of changes to um, to story origin. And your YouTube background is amazing. <laughs> yeah, I've I've really upgraded my uh, my backdrop. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like, you're like a professional uh, YouTuber. When, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This past, this was sort of my Christmas gift to myself. Uh, was uh, trying to upgrade my my office space a little bit because uh, yeah, when we talked five years ago, I was sitting out on my porch. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it looked very comfy and relaxing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although the uh, the wind is not so good for the microphones. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, that's true. Yes, yeah. People like talk about sound quality. I don't even like really care about sound quality, but um, I do know that people like it's really important to them is the sound. The yeah, background. yeah. So for sure. Yeah. Well, let's talk about like. Well, let's just take a step back. What are you doing with YouTube? Like, what are you? Are you like trying to be more active with creating videos and being on? Yeah, I have not gone in into it really time building this and mm -hmm. and um and now I'm like there's like some things I want to take care of on the programming side of Story Origin and, and shipping some uh improvements and things and then I really want to spend some more time uh more consistently creating videos just cuz I think there's so much that authors can um there's there's so much to learn. And mm -hmm. I think I could help authors get up to speed on a lot of that stuff. And as it relates to both story origin and stuff that story origin doesn't necessarily help you with, but like, you know, just those things that are like, okay, I want to start a mailing list. Mm -hmm. How do I get a custom domain? Or how do I actually, you know, <laughs> set up like Google Workspace or something like that? That kind of stuff is is really useful to a lot of authors. And that stuff that's like, related to story origin in that like if you're trying to build your mailing list story origin is there to help you do it but then there's all this other sort of side stuff that you need to figure out before you are actually yeah. sending newsletters and stuff like that yeah for sure yeah i mean i recorded the like an overview of story origin today it was only 36 minutes and even then i like barely scratched the surface on all the things it could do right and um just the c name tutorial too and then i was like ah oh, i understand this but now i have to explain it and then i was like i don't want to make this like a 40 minute video about c names <laughs> right you could do that. yeah um, so it's and i love that it has c names out and you can have a subdomain so that was like so i guess let's just talk about what are all the things the cool things that and improvements that have happened over the last five years oh so many um so so let's see i think the last time we talked we didn't have we didn't have uh so review copies you can distribute yeah. uh you know review copies to mm -hmm. to build your review team and track whether or not people are actually leaving reviews and you can bet their review profiles on amazon or goodreads or bookbub or wherever they say they're going to leave a review um and then and then you you can approve them and then uh, let's see what else there's the uh you can do the same thing with your audiobook promo code so if you produce with acx or find a way or you produce with someone else you'll get kobo or audiobooks.com promo codes you can distribute those through story origin and again to get reviews on your audiobooks uh you can you know arrange i think i think i did have at no, I don't think I had at that time. You can arrange newsletter swaps with other authors to cross promote your books in their newsletters and you'll promote their mm -hmm. books in your newsletters. There's the website builder. There's gathering feedback on your beta copies and streamlining that whole process, building your website. Uh, mostly, most recently, the thing is uh, providing is doing direct sales of your ebook. So you can set up your, you can create uh, direct sales ebook pages on Story Origin. And you would integrate that with a payment processor. In this case, uh, the the current 
only payment processor that's currently integrated is, is Lemon Squeezy because I think that is the best option for 99% of authors that want to set up a direct sales store. Um, and then you can have store origin automatically handle the file delivery for that shop and all that stuff. So that's a, that's the latest big thing. Uh, but yeah, it's, there's, there's so much. <laughs> well, I really like the cool part is whenever I buy books directly from authors, cause I try to be supportive, right. And everyone mm -hmm. wants to, but I don't remember where I stored it or where it downloaded. And I love that story origin has four readers. Here's every single book that you purchase directly. Yeah. So it's like yeah. Amazon. That's why people don't want to leave Amazon. They like have one central repository. Right, right. Yeah. And Story Origin with your with the reader dashboard, you just can go to here's here's all the books that you've purchased and, and collect yes. them all there for sure. Yeah. Download them anytime. Yeah. And another cool feature that I really like too is um, you know, with beta readers, and I don't do it a lot, but it's hard because like you send it to one and then you have to give them editing permissions or review, right? And so sometimes they make weird changes and then everybody can see every Everybody else's review, right? And so this like helps so much because they can comment, they can annotate, and you can force them to not get to read further until they answer questions. Right. So yeah, with the beta copies feature, readers unlock each chapter by leaving because one of the things that I hear from a lot of authors is like, oh, you know, I, you know, gave them a Word doc or I gave them like, you know, my Google doc or whatever. And then they came back and they said, it was great. And you're like, okay, <laughs> but what was great? And like, also, so what wasn't great? Because I actually <laughs> want to improve my story. And so uh, getting, getting real feedback is incredibly important. So yeah, that beta copies feature really, you know, it gets those readers to leave that feedback. And you can provide them critique guidance too and ask them questions like, you know, what scenes did you think were boring in the book? Or what, mm -hmm. you know, what did you think about this interaction between those two characters were? Because for a lot of, uh, you know, readers, you might have friends that read the genre or whatever, but they've never beta, beta read a book before. So providing them a little bit guiden of, of guidance about like, what kind of feedback are you looking for is also extremely helpful. And before, you know, using the story origin beta copies features, like some tangled mess of like, I'm sending Word docs and then like, yeah. Google Forms to get feedback. And then like, when you answer the Google Form, I'll send you the next five chapters and then you can get, it's, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it streamlines, it just, it does what everybody wants. It just makes it automatic. So it just yeah. magically happens on the back end. <laughs> yeah. So that's perfect. Uh, another feature too, I, I might be the only one who's like, this is my favorite feature is the word count. Cause I don't like Scrivener and I might be like the only one, but, I don't like Scrivener or Atticus or anything. So I do all of my uh, drafting in Google Docs and it doesn't do that feature. Like I still wanna know like, how many words do I need to write per day? Like, how is my progress going? How do I track that, right? And so that is literally my favorite feature in the whole app. <laughs> I, I love <laughs> I I love hearing that though because like that is that was for me one of those features where it's like so so at that at the point that I released that feature story origin had always been all about just the marketing aspects of of you know being an author is like mm -hmm. how do I build my mailing list how do I get reviewers how do I set up universal book links and then I released this goal trackers feature where you can track like your daily word count or you can track mm -hmm. how many pages you want to edit and like I expected most authors to be like, what are you wh like, why this is like a marketing tool. <laughs> right. This seems like a really odd thing to add to a marketing tool, Evan. Uh, but then over the years, like the feedback I've gotten from so many authors has been like, you know, I never really tracked my word count before, but mm -hmm. I saw it was there on my story origin dashboard. And I really like all the other tools story origin has. So I decided to try it out just because it was there. And then they are like, Evan, thank you for adding this feature because it's not something I would have tried before, but I've significantly increased my productivity because I know like, I know how many words I need to write every day to hit my goal. And yeah. if I miss a day, then my goal like moves up just a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah for and sure. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot visually. of authors have found it's really helpful from a productivity perspective. Yeah. And it gives you those nice graphs and all that stuff too. Yeah. So well, I guess, well, when we talk about features, I don't know if there's a way for you to track it on the back end. Do you know what the most used features are of Story Origin? Um, I, I think that would, I mean, it's hard to say what's like most used. 
um because like a feature like the gold trackers feature that's used like every day by a lot of authors right and so that's mm -hmm. like a daily thing um but then you look at something like the reader magnets feature which helps you build your mailing list and that's not a feature that authors are necessarily using like every day per, mm -hmm. per se but that is a feature that a lot of authors come to story origin for to start with to start building their mailing list that's like the first mm -hmm. feature they they start out with so um so i'd say yeah like the the reader magnets feature and helping authors build their mailing list and arrange group promos and newsletter swaps is usually what authors come to story origin to get started with and then they'll branch out into doing stuff like you know keeping track of their daily award count with goal trackers or using the beta copies or review copies etc okay and so well i guess on the flip side for readers then are readers mostly coming to story origin for just a direct link or do they click on the promos or do they click on the audiobooks? Like, do you have any idea like the activity there? Yeah. So most of most of the, the book downloads that Store Origin does are for reader magnets, just because they're the easiest thing, right? It's like mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of times that traffic comes from authors doing cross promotions. So newsletter swaps where I'm saying, yeah, I'll promote one of your books and one of my newsletters if you promote one of my books and one of your newsletters um so uh and and then group promos where it's like you me and let's say 20 other authors in our genre will all put our books on a single landing page and then we'll all drive our traffic to that landing page together mm -hmm. um so a lot of times that traffic is directed to those reader magnets and then and then readers will request a copy of that re uh, reader magnet because all they need to do is enter an email address or whatever right versus like review copies they're not there aren't going to be as many requests for review copies just because you're asking something of the reader right if they're like mm -hmm. oh like to get this free book i have to leave a review and not every off not every reader is going to do that right or or like has a goodreads or bookbub profile or something of the sort where they would actually leave reviews so um, that gets used not quite as much by readers um but probably you know outside of if you're like looking outside of downloads like universal book links get more traffic than anything right because those are uh, a lot of times what you and i might set up a newsletter swap for like i'm gonna promote your book uh for sale and you'll promote my book for sale and we'll we'll do those with our universal book links so that we're sending readers to the retailers where our books are available. So Amazon or um, uh, Google Play or Kobo, et cetera. So I'll promote that universal book link in my newsletter and say, hey, you know, here's here's a great book that I think other author that other readers might like. Um, and so so, yeah, those those get probably by far the most traffic. Um, but those are not like a book download. That's just sending sending readers to retailers so that we can increase our sales. Right. Yeah, which is still the best part. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so I, what do you? So here's what I think. I think the most underused feature is probably the promos. Um, and I don't know what you think the most underutilized because I don't think people realize. I, I've done promos before, and it's so easy to make graphics now on Canva, right? You just need a pretty graphic. You get a bunch of authors to. It's just easier. It's like one stop shopping for readers. And I just don't see as many promos being group promos versus newsletter swaps. But I don't know what you think is like the most underutilized or biggest mistake. So I think I think in underutilized, I would say organizing your own group because there are a lot of group promos, but mm -hmm. like a lot of authors are not willing to organize their own group promos like you said mm -hmm. because they don't want to design a, a cover image like a little a little banner image for it which is as you said super easy to do with tools like yeah. canva or book brush <laughs> etc and so it takes maybe five minutes to create that little banner image but mm -hmm. when you organize your own group promos you then can also select books to have premium spots in that group promo meaning that those books will always show up at the top of the uh, 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 the top of the group promo page. So when there's you, me, and 20 other authors on that promo page, for the books that aren't in the premium spots, they're shuffled every time that someone visits a page. That way we all sort of get an equal opportunity to show up near the top of the page. But mm -hmm. for those books that have premium spots, they're always at the top of that page and then everything else yeah. is sort of sorted down below randomly. So when you organize those group promos, 
you can set your own books as having those premium spots so that they'll appear at that top of that page. And so that extra five minutes to invest in creating that little banner yeah. in, image in, in filling out that form on Story Origin is hugely beneficial because you, you'll get more visibility on your books with them having the premium spot. Because, you know, mm -hmm. one out of 20 times, they're going to end up at the bottom of the page. Right. If, yeah. if they don't have that premium spot. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Above the fold. No one even talks about that anymore. Yeah. It's still the premium <laughs> like, place you want to yeah. be for anything. Right. Very cool. Absolutely. So, you know, I think it's really amazing. I think the latest, one of the latest features is that people can sell direct, right? And so I personally mm -hmm. think it's, it's great that people want to use Shopify, but if you don't have a lot of books, you're wasting a lot of money to have a shopping cart. For, you know, you can put my three books in the shopping cart, like how much time have you wasted, right? Where they can just sell one book at a time. And that's even still how I buy books. So what do you think is the future prediction just in general of direct sales and how this distribution channel is going to work? Yeah, I think probably 95% of authors that set up a Shopify store in the next 12 months are probably going to be closing it down. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. just too difficult. Mm -hmm. It's too difficult. It takes too much time. You end up having to, anywhere you make a book sale, pretty much you're going to end up having to, uh, you'll you'll end up being liable for collecting sales tax or VAT tax or something of the mm -hmm. sort, right? Some, some sort of consumption tax that most countries have, right? So like you make a sale anywhere in the EU, you, you sell a book in Spain, one book, you're now liable for collecting and remitting sales tax to the Spanish government or well, that mm -hmm. tax is what they call it, but it's a type of sales tax. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's, that's a huge headache that Shopify does not solve for you. They're like, <laughs> you do that. Right. <laughs> uh, and for authors, that means like you have to register, you have to, you have to track all those sales. You have to submit your filings on a quarterly basis. Mm -hmm. It's just a huge headache. And I think a lot of authors that are like, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to set up my Shopify store. I'm going to start doing direct sales and then and then they're like, "Okay, I have to pay for Shopify. That's 30 bucks a month." And yeah. then I want to pay and then I have all these different plugins like I want to upsell I want to upsell mm -hmm. readers on buying my series, not just like the individual book. So now that's another, you know, x, you know, tens of dollars per month and then I need this other thing because Shopify is not really built for authors. It's built right. to be completely agnostic to kind of e-commerce, right? So mm -hmm. you have to end up usually adding or paying for a bunch of plugins to that store as well. Mm -hmm. And so you, you know, I was talking to an author who pays, I think around $160 per month between like their Shopify subscription and all the plugins they're using. And I'm like, wow, that's, I mean, and, and he, you know, he, he's got like 30 plus books he's published. So he, and mm -hmm. he's able to make his store profitable for him. And he spends a ton of time like optimizing Facebook ads and all that stuff. Right. So, so if you're willing to do all that stuff, like the, the investment can be worth it. But I think for a lot of authors, it's just not going to be. Um, and so with story origin integrating with lemon squeezy, so lemon squeezy acts as the payment processor and they also act as the merchant of record, which means that when, that means that the reader is technically actually buying the book from Lemon Squeezy. So when you sell that book in Spain, Lemon Squeezy is the one that's responsible for collecting and remitting that VAT tax. Mm -hmm. um, and you as the author don't need to worry about it. So then Lemon Squeezy just pays you the the um, the remainder of your portion. So uh, uh, they just make a small transaction processing fee for any, any payments that they process. So... Uh, if you use something like Shopify, their payment processing th fees, I believe, are something like 30 cents plus 2.9 percent, which, mm -hmm. you know, you, you're responsible for the VAT and sales tax and stuff on. With Lemon Squeezy, if you integrate it with Story Origin, because I've 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 negotiated a discount with Lemon Squeezy for authors that integrate with Story Origin, that transaction processing fee is 30 cents plus 5 percent. So you're talking about a 3.1 percent delta between the two. Mm -hmm. And I think most authors uh, would be willing to give up an additional 3.1% to not have to worry about registering and paying quarterly, you know, sales tax or VAT across every country in the world. So, um, yeah, so so that's how that that works. And that's sort of my my prediction is like a lot of authors will be uh, probably 
not not work like the Shopify routes not going to work out for a lot of authors. Yeah, exactly. I don't think they realize like they just see that $30 per month, but you need so many different plugins to like make it work. And that's if you can figure it out yourself, right? And yeah. so it's like, it's a whole thing. And then you need to drive traffic to like, who even knows that people are successful with driving traffic to their website. Now they have to drive traffic to their website plus a Shopify store, right? Like it's a big investment. Like right. it's like business all on its own. So yeah, I totally yeah. agree. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, and in a lot of that stuff like the like the like the plugin for like doing like upselling readers mm -hmm. on buying into your series, like that's a plugin you have to pay for on Shopify. Yes. On Story yeah. Origin, it's just built in because mm -hmm. Story Origin's made for authors, right? So when you want to upsell a reader on on buying into the full well, series it's just here's the page that i want to upsell people on and so you, it just you know readers can buy can look at the you know i can buy this ebook for 99 cents or buck 99 or whatever or i can get all six books in the series for 15 bucks or 20 bucks yeah. or whatever in storage and we'll promote that on that page for you so um you can just really easily upsell readers on buying a much larger uh, making a much larger purchase and that's incredibly important especially for authors if they're planning on um, Facebook ads, because mm -hmm. a lot of times the math on Facebook ads does not work out when you're only selling a 99 cent ebook, yes. right? Uh, <laughs> you need to be selling something that's a, that's priced substantially higher in order to make that ad. And so you want to be thinking, how can I make this uh, sale into a $20 sale instead of a, you know, one, two or $3 sale? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so, you know, I love, so one of the big things I like too is that everything's kind of included in story origin, whereas I feel like book funnel nickel and dimes me and like keeps trying to upcharge me. So is that still, even now that I've said that, is that still the plan going forward? All the new features will just kind of be included or are you planning to offer a second tier? Uh, yeah, right now everything is just it's either on the basic plan, which is totally free. So that's the direct downloads, the universal book links, mm -hmm. uh, the goal tracker for the word count tracking. There's the standard plan, which is $10 per month or $100 per year. And that just includes everything. So that includes the newsletter swaps, the group promos, the review copies, all that stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what, so I have a wish list, but I'll wait. What features are you planning to add for 2024 to the app? Yeah. <laughs> um, so there is a super long to-do list. I don't have a specific timeline on any individual feature when it comes to story origin um, because I don't want to set expectations and then not meet them because okay. making engineering estimates is always really challenging. Um, but I can say like probably the most requested feature currently right now has been like the second I released the direct sales feature for eBooks, like I got like 20 emails from authors being like, Hey, can you do this for audiobooks too? Oh, <laughs> so that was <yeah>. like, <laughs> that was I like that. when I send the email about that, like that, I got so many responses from authors being like that. But yeah, I mean, my to-do list is probably about two years old long uh my to-do list has basically always been two years long even since i started so <laughs> I, don't, I don't think i'll ever really finish it all but there's you know there's uh yeah there's so much in the way of like low-hanging fruit that i feel like there's so much there's so many problems that authors have <laughs> yeah, authors great. have so many problems <laughs> and i am here to like build the solutions because i have a lot of fun doing that so uh, I, yeah, I'm looking forward to like adding a lot, of, lot more stuff to Story Origin still for sure. Cool. Uh, so let me tell you my wish list and you can tell me if it's like okay. a yes or a no. Yeah. Okay. So first is the newsletter swap. So I see like some people with, and I don't even know what the process would be for this, but like they say they have 4,000 people on their list and they have a 30% open rate and click through. Like, is that true? Can we have like a ver? you know how like, I think it was Instagram, they were doing that verifications badge where like people could verify by sending you screenshots or there was a way in the app to like actually confirm that that's true. So with story origin, with the, with the, with the newsletter swaps, 
if you use MailerLite, MailChimp, or um, SendFox, mm -hmm. you can integrate from one of those three providers in Storage and will automatically pull the stats from that provider for your mailing list. And you'll get a little okay. green verified badge. So when you're looking at the newsletter swaps and you see all those stats about like, um, like the mailing list size and mm -hmm. open rate and click rate, you'll see a little green verified badge um, next to uh, authors that have integrated with their email service provider to, to pull those stats. So, so those stats are coming direct from those authors email service providers. If they don't have that little green verified badge, it means that those authors have entered their list, you know, their list stats manually, like mm -hmm. their open rate, click rate, list size. Mm -hmm. um, and that may be because they're using an email service provider that doesn't provide those stats for lists. So, so Story Origin integrates with nine different email service providers. So when a reader like wants to get a, a reader magnet, that reader magnet store origin will automatically send their contact details for uh, that reader to your straight to your email list. So there are nine different email service providers Story origin integrates with there. But on those list stats, only three out of those nine providers actually give like the open rate and click rate stats. So pull those stats for six of the email service providers just because their APIs don't provide them. Um, so 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 yeah, it's but sort of either way, regardless of what the email service provider says their open rate or click rate is, I always recommend you can go on, click their list and hit the past campaigns tab. And you can see other group promos and newsletter swaps that they've participated in on Story Origin. Yeah. And Story Origin will tell you how many clicks they've sent to each newsletter swap or each group promo. Because an author might have a 3%, you know, click rate on their email service provider. But that might be because they're putting, those readers are clicking on like, maybe they're putting huge at the top of their own newsletters or something and the readers are clicking on those, but they're not clicking on the newsletter swaps or group promos below or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. So regardless of what an email service provider says about open rate or click rate, I always recommend you go to the author's posted mailing list on Store Origin and hit that past campaigns tab and look at how many sending the the end of group promos and newsletter swaps that they've agreed to on store origin because that's going to give you a much better estimate of how many clicks they're going to send to your book or your group promo oh, that you're okay. you know that they're participating in oh yeah very cool. all right so there's a workaround so the second request i have and this is yeah, yeah, yeah. can we get rid of the moby file requ requirement because i think it went away right and so I, on the video i, was I like, ah. i would <laughs> yeah yeah I would love to get rid of Moby files. I, I would love to bury them. Um, <laughs> Amazon, when you send when you send an EPUB, you know, so so Amazon rolled out, they sort of deprecated the Moby file without yeah. really <laughs> getting rid of it. Or like lots of Kindle devices still they only read Moby files. So when you send that uh... EPUB file to your Kindle device via like the Kindle email address. Or when you use like amazon.com slash send to Kindle, Amazon's actually converting that to a Mobi file on the back end. And then that is what your device is actually <laughs> downloading, not the EPUB file. So if you want readers to be able to like connect their Kindle to mm -hmm. uh, their computer and be able to drag and drop the file onto their Kindle via the USB, or if they want to be able to open a file, if they go to the Kindle web, web browser and they download a file directly to their Kindle device from mm -hmm. the web browser, for a lot of Kindles, they have to download the Mobi file because their their devices still can't open and parse ah. EPUB files, which is why Mobi files are still required on storage and because there's a lot of Kindle devices that still, they actually don't, <laughs> they don't handle EPUB. Amazon has not right. really made this clear to authors, um, but the Kindle devices still don't actually <laughs> use huh. the EPUB files. So, That's crazy. I didn't so know it's, that. yeah, it's not very clear, <laughs> but story origin. So, so authors that like, are like, I don't even know how to create a, a Mobi file. Like when you're uploading your files to Story Origin, there's a little info box down below, like the file inputs yeah. that says like, here, convert, you know, here's some directions on here, how to convert your file. And you can use Story Origin's converter. So you just go to storyoriginapp.com slash convert. You can upload your EPUB and Story Origin will automatically output that Mobi file. Um, so you can, yeah, you can just convert your EPUB to Mobi with Story Origin that way.
Yeah. Yeah, that's convenient. I didn't even realize that. Yeah, I, would, I would love to be done with Moby files. <laughs> right? Yeah, I had no idea. Okay, well, that's good yeah. to know. And then um, this is minor. So the last request I have is for the, so on um, the beta readers, right? So I'd like to have, it's not mm -hmm. even like, I don't know if people have street teams anymore, but I'd like like an exclusive place where like I can give out rewards and they can be entered in for prizes or, you know, like it's all automated. So then once you've reviewed the whole book, then you get, I don't know, some new freebie they can download or be entered into a contest. So something more to incentivize them. Because a lot of the beta readers, even though that the tool is amazing, they still don't use it, right? They get busy or who knows what. Like, it, it'd be nice to incentivize them to, like, do more work <laughs> for free. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Well, so, yeah. So, there's not a way to, like, automate distributing something to those readers. Mm -hmm. um, but when someone, re when someone applies for a beta copy, uh, you get access to their email address. So... And, and then a lot of times, um, what I recommend to authors is, uh, like, be clear in your beta copy. You can create little application instructions of saying, like, you know, what would you like to, you know, w when you're applying for this beta copy, tell me how many books have you read in this genre? Or, like, mm -hmm. who is your favorite author? That way, when a beta reader applies, I can know, like, oh, they, they actually understand the genre and they're going to understand the tropes and they're going to have good feedback for me because they actually understand the kind of book that I'm writing versus like if you have your mom or dad that has never read, read a book in the genre before, they're probably not going to give you the best feedback because mm -hmm. they don't understand the genre. Um, so in those beta copy application instructions, you can just like clarify. You can also just be like, hey, would you want to be added to like the acknowledgments for this book so that when I publish it, you're in the acknowledgment section, right? Oh, that's um, a good idea. Like that is that is really cool to a lot of readers to be like, my name is in a book, right? Like I helped like be a part of this story. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I would recommend putting that in like the beta copy, like application instructions and stuff like that. Just like ask them if they want that or ask them like, hey, would you want, uh, you know, X, Y, Z thing. And then on on the back end, like after they've gone through the beta copy, like and they've left their feedback and all that stuff, um, you can you can just email them. You can get access to their email address through storage and send them an email with with whatever it is that you would like or um, or you could ask them for like their their address if you want to like mail them something personally or something like that. But yeah, doing something automated like that uh, with Story Origin would be pretty challenging to automate like prizes or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but that is that is an interesting idea. Yeah. Well, I mean, now that you're talking, I guess I could just put the very last chapter could be called Unlock Your Reward. And so then you'd want to yeah. get to the end. And then I could put all the directions in there like a chapter <laughs> with links. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and you could make the first chapter in your beta copy something that like is like instructions like, hey, just so you know, when you get to the end, this is what you know, this is my, what's waiting for you or something yes. like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool. So what do you, what kind of advice do you have for authors who are thinking of doing the same thing you did and starting their own software? <laughs> sorry, uh, sorry. <laughs> Lost you yeah. for a second there. What what's my advice for authors that are thinking of doing what? Thinking of starting their own software. <laughs> oh, for starting their own software. Oh, uh, oof. uh. Well, if you want to be a writer, don't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> are you just not writing at all? Is that it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like, when I was trying to, uh, so. So I used to be I used to write short stories back in high school, and that's sort of what mm -hmm. got me interested in building tools for writers. So I got interested in oh. tech and entrepreneurship in college, and then um, I worked for a few years, and I wanted to get back into writing and then build tools for writers at the same time. And then the building the tools for the writers just quickly took over a hundred percent of my time, and so I didn't have time to get to the writing, <laughs> yeah. which was like the other part of the plan, right? Um, and so, yeah, if you if you want to be a writer, don't build software because it will take up 100% <laughs> of your time. Um, if you want to build software, I can give you advice for building software for authors, which is like mostly just like be transparent um, mm -hmm. and be really communicative. Uh, this is one of the things that I think was the most helpful for me when I was getting started with story origin was like, 
I was always just very open about um, story origin was in what I called an open beta for a very long time, where it was just completely free to use all the features. Yeah. And I was just transparent, like, hey, this is going to cost something at some point, you won't be able to get this for free forever. Mm -hmm. But I promise to you, when I do make it paid, you will still get it free for several months, even after it becomes paid. Uh, because I don't want to leave you like, in a scramble where you're like, oh, story origins paid and I don't want to pay for it. Now I need to scramble and figure out how to do all this stuff using some alternative method. Like mm -hmm. I was like, you know, I'll give you, you'll have plenty of time even after it becomes paid where you'll be able to get story origin for free and you can gradually migrate away from story origin if you want to. Like ultimately, like I don't think it's going to be at a price point where you're not going to be willing to pay for it, right? Which is like $10 per month or $100 per year. Nothing. That's a cost that's <laughs> like most most authors are like, oh, yeah, that's extremely affordable for me. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's not for everyone, which, you know, it, and that's okay. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, 99% of authors were like, Evan, please let me throw my money at you. Thank you. Right. Um, so, um, so, so yeah, so I would say just being really open and communicative in, because I have seen cases before where a lot of times like people are building um, stuff for authors and they want to be sort of this mysterious person behind a curtain, like the Wizard of Oz, like you don't know who I am, I just make software. Um, but a lot of authors will not trust you. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of authors have been burned by many, many, you know, like vanity presses and all this stuff. And it's just like in the publishing industry, if you try to start a company in the publishing industry, unlike other industries where you might start out at like a neutral reputation in the publishing industry, when you start a company, you start out with a negative reputation and you have to like actively like climb out of this hole <laughs> yes. um, <laughs> to be like, yes, I'm not just like, trying to scam people um, mm -hmm. because there's there's been so many scammers in the industry before that it's just yeah you, you know everyone just starts out at, at negative so you have to you have to just be very transparent and just uh uh you know gradually build trust with people um because it, it is quite challenging yeah so if you could start over again what would you do differently and would you maybe have never started it and just written books instead <laughs> no i i I'm very happy. Like I love what I do. Um, and like, I love that. I, 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 yeah, I love my life. So I, <laughs> I would not, uh, I would not change anything about it. Um, and you know, like I, you know, I think like, <laughs> like the things I would go back in time and change are like, not at all major things like they're very minor like when i started story origin and call instead of calling group promos group promos i called them bundles and so in my code i have a lot of references to call to to like the word bundles oh. and i would much rather it be called group promos because that is a more accurate reflection of what it is which is like that's like not even <laughs> it's like it's very little and like i could i could go and i could change all of those references like on the back end but provide zero value to authors <laughs> for right. me to go and do that and spend the time doing it so it's like it's like not a big deal but it's like one of those little minor things where i was like i wish i'd picked different words for that variable <laughs> yeah Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's a programming thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very much a programming thing. Cool. And so, well, so with readers and authors sign up, they just go to the website. Is it the same? Like, should readers go somewhere different if they want to join? Do you have a newsletter for readers? Uh, there's no, there's no newsletter for readers. So uh, it's just storyoriginapp.com for both readers and authors. Readers can, when they go to storyoriginapp.com, there's a little segment at the top that says, Hey, are you here to get free books? And um, they can click on ebooks or audiobooks mm -hmm. or group promos, and they can look at the review copies and audiobook review copies that Story Origin has that authors have chosen to publicly list. And readers can go there and they can save filters, say, like, say I'm interested in sweet romance or something. You can mm -hmm. save filters and then Story Origin will send you a digest weekly of here's the review copies that authors have publicly listed in the past week that match your saved filters. So here's the review copies that that are have sweet romance tags, or mm -hmm. you know here's the here's the um, 
you know, review copies that have lit RPG, fantasy, thriller, whatever tags you want to add. So, so readers can get uh, a weekly digest of review copies that have been publicly pe uh, listed in the past week by saving filters on those pages. Oh, very cool. And so where can authors find you? Like, do you post like, hey, I, you know, some people post like, I just took a shower. I just had this for breakfast. Like, are you one of those posters yeah. on social media? <gasps> Um, I, I will post some stuff like that on, um, on my Facebook and, okay. uh, authors are, are welcome to shoot me a friend request on Facebook or join the story origin authors, Facebook group. Um, okay. I'm not super active on other social media, but I also, when authors join story origin, I do have a mailing list for the author side so where I'll talk about like, here's the features I've introduced or added or updated or whatever. And so when authors sign up to store origin, they'll, they'll be added that mailing list and, uh, and I'll, I'll send updates there and I will off like, uh, you know, here's, here's me. I bought this, uh, I thought was one bottle of soy sauce off of walmart.com and cause that's what the product <laughs> image showed, but then I got 12 bottles of soy sauce. I should have, uh, you know, paid a little bit more attention to the description rather than the product image. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody needs 12 so, bottles of soy sauce. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure yeah. Right. Yeah. No, <laughs> we, we, we gave some away as Christmas presents. Here's a <laughs> bottle of soy sauce. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Yeah. It's been great. <laughs> Very cool. Well, thank you so much for coming on and sharing things about Story Origin. And I'm so glad that we got to talk and catch up in five years. <laughs> yeah, I know. We should do it more often. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If not, I'll see you again in five years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I will leave links to all of Evan's things below. In fact, I didn't know about the Facebook groups. So I'll leave links to that as well. So if you have any questions, you can awesome. post them there or in his group.